Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have a piece of live oak. This comes to us from our friend Tuffy Marginez. The piece is roughly 11 inches wide, 12 and a half inches long, and about 5 inches high at that highest point right there. I've just returned from the drill press where I drilled that large clearance hole, 3 and a half inch, and then I drilled a 5 16 inch hole for my woodworm screw. So let's get it over here to the lathe and get it mounted up. This end right here is a lot larger than this end is, so it's going to be out of balance. Well, this is going to be a pain in the neck. That's 340 RPM. That's the best I can do because it's so out of balance because this end right here is so much thicker than the other end. And the problem with that is it's not going to get much better because that thickness is on the top side. It's not on the bottom side. So whatever I do down here isn't really going to affect it much. As I remove some from this thick side, I'm going to be removing it from the thin side as well, and it's just going to stay out of balance, at least until I get to the top. But it might improve somewhat once I start removing some of that thickness on the top. My regular viewers know that I don't love using carbide tools. I just prefer traditional gouges. With that said, I went out and bought this set of uh, Rikon carbide tools. I've never used them. They look all fancy in this box. The only reason I bought them was because they were on sale for $100 off. So that's what I'm going to use because I'm just going to, uh, with a gouge, I'm just going to spend all my time sharpening. And that's just silly because I'm really not going to get very far. So the way these work is you have this handle. Uh, feels like it's aluminum. And you just fit this in here. This is not a review. It's an impressive looking set, but you know, it's carbide. So I'm gonna start with this round one. It's got a round, a square, and a diamond shape tool. I'm gonna to use the round one, and I'm gonna start working on the corners of this piece. Well, this is just miserable. <laughs> this is not fun. Not having a good time. But we'll get there. No doubt about it. We're not giving up now, that's for sure. That's all coming off my head. Another reason not to like carbide. You can't control where the chips go. They just go where they go. And they're everywhere. Here we go. Oh, maybe I can pick the speed up. What do you think? About 390. Thank you. 
not a very attractive shape yet. I don't know what we have in mind for a shape, but this ain't it. I'm starting to feel like this cutter is dull. I wouldn't imagine it should be, but I'm not making much progress here. I'm going to try the speed again. Well. Now it's really out of balance again. I gotta take a break. You can see I've marked out for a tenon, and this is my larger, for my larger jaws. Uh, it'll be a three and a quarter inch tenon. What I want to do now is work away at this corner so that I can develop some kind of a shape on this profile, because what we got here is kind of ugly. But I can only come in here a little bit, and then I have to leave room for a base, and then I have to leave room to make a, uh, a tenon. So I'm, I'm not going to come in here much, but I just need to alter this outside to some sort of pleasing shape, we hope. Still turning at 390. Sheesh. better. So now I'm going to switch to a half inch standard grind bowl gouge and start working on the bottom here. Now I'm going to switch to this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon, but first I have to raise my tool rest a little because it's a pretty thin tool. I wish I could say it's sharp, but I don't think it is. Actually, I don't want to square up the sides. This, these jaws have a uh, dovetail, so I need to go in further in the back. Okay, we have a nice dovetail on there. Now, I, I need to see if I can shear scrape this outside, smooth it out some. And for that, I'm going to use a 5 8 inch swept back bowl gouge. Well, that's not bad. I think we can sand that. Yep, it's time for sanding. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm starting at 80 grit. I'll alternate between forward and reverse and I'll work up through 400 grit and I'll bring you back once it's time to put some sanding sealer on here. See you in a bit. And as promised, here goes the sanding sealer. The sanding job was 
rather difficult. Took quite a while, a couple hours, I guess. But the good part about oak, to me, is that it works so well. It, it sands nicely. It's just, it's kind of a big piece and it takes time, that's all. And I did use my Sando Flex on this right here, this bark inclusion. Uh, and I didn't show it, sorry about that, but I will show it when I do the top side. But this bark inclusion is all sanded. Being an open grain wood, even though it's sanded quite smoothly, it's going to take at least two coats of sanding sealer, maybe three. I'm just going to show you the first coat here because any subsequent coats will look the same. And then after two or three coats of sanding sealer, I will apply at least two coats of shellac. And I won't show you that because it looks exactly like this. I don't do anything different. A rag and shellac instead of sanding sealer. And I didn't tell you that I microwaved this piece, but I did. Uh, just to kill any possible bugs that might be in there. I do that with most of the wood that I turn. And after I get all the uh, sanding sealer and all the coats of shellac on, I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside. See you in a bit. Just check our progress here. Well, I want to come out a little further this way. Yeah, okay, that's as far out as I want to come. Sure wish I could pick the speed up. I can try. I'm about 500. See if I can get in here a little closer. I'm going to go sharpen up. Man, oh man, for being wet wood, it's sure tough to cut. I'm sure I'm a long ways from the bottom, but I like to check. Well, not that far, about an inch. Which means we need to go another three quarters of an inch. I'm going to take a little break. I am pooped. I brought the tool rest closer to the side here. I want to work on the side. Thin it down a little bit, not, not necessarily at the top, but a quarter of the way down and then down further from there.
Tuffy sent me a Tuffy with this one. I guess that's how he got his name. Okay, I'm going to uh, sharpen up my negative rake scraper and scrape this side. Then we'll move back down to the bottom. Not good, but it is what it is. I'll have to hand sand it, I guess. I bet that's pretty close. Yep, it's about 5 sixteenths right now. Whew, this thing is wearing me out. Well, at least I got a decent cut across the bottom. Scraping shouldn't be too difficult. Wow, what a job. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sando Flex. I'm going to sand all of the bark. Typically I do this with 180 grit and I will use 180 grit, but first I'm going to use 120 grit because this, is, this bark is quite coarse and it, it will easily withstand the 120. And I want to be sure I get it all, including this sharp little devil right here. Ooh, that's sharp. And over here. Yeah, that's sharp. So I will show you that and then when I finish with that I'll switch to my 2 inch disc sander with 80 grit and I'll do that up through 400 grit and I'll show you both of those as soon as I get my mask on. So that's what that looks like and that doesn't change how the bark looks it just uh, makes it feel much nicer and less sharp and just cleans it up and makes it feel good. Then with the two inch disc sander the lathe spinning forward will go about 380 rpm. And that requires a very light touch out here on these wings because, you know, you're sanding wood and then you're not sanding wood and then the other wing comes around and smacks you. So you have to be really careful when you're doing out this way. Just a light touch. You don't want to push into that gap and then have it come around and hit you. So it's going to take a little time, probably a couple hours, but I'll get this all sanded up up through 400 and I'll bring you back when it's time to put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well I don't mind telling you sanding was a pain in the butt. It just took forever. 
I'm so glad it's done. It's these wings that makes it so difficult. You just have to be so careful. And of course, even being careful doesn't really work. But now we get the sanding sealer and a good look at what this is gonna look like with finish on it. And that bark is going to be outstanding. This, this piece is all about the bark. I probably already said that. But it's so. The bark is just gonna be gorgeous. You'll see. Now I've put some sanding sealer in this little can and I've got my little acid brush. And I'm just going to apply it to these bark inclusions and then all of the bark. And it's going to take quite a little bit of time to do that. So I will put on two coats of this uh, sanding sealer and then two coats of shellac. That's what I did on the outside and I'm sure that's what I'll do on the inside. If it takes more than two coats of sanding sealer, I'll do it. I like to stop at two coats of shellac. The more you put on, the shinier it gets. and and I kind of like a semi-gloss rather than a real glossy finish. So I'll bring you back when that's all done and we'll work getting that tenon off of there. See you in a bit. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm gonna put a piece of non-slip material over that and bring up the bowl. And bring up my tailstock. I still have the center hole there for reference. So I can just drive the live center into that. And that should pretty well center the ball, we'll find out. Bring up the tool rest. This was a pretty big project. Not exactly sure why. We'll spin the piece up a little bit. Apply a little more pressure. Turn the speed up to about 600 RPM. Well, not that fast, it's still out of balance, isn't it? About 500 RPM. I'll take a five eight or a half inch standard grind bowl gouge and begin removing the tenon. I'm going to check for clearance. And I have clearance, so I don't have to remove all of this. It's already well below the base that it sets on. So we're in good shape there. I just need to clean it up a little bit and continue removing the center portion. pretty good that'll sand up real easy now I'm gonna switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge so that I can get in here a little closer and I'm going to adjust my tool rest a little tighter I'm gonna slow the speed down here a little bit about 350 Now I'm going to slow it down to about 200 RPM and I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning or disintegrates like that, we'll know we're through. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand it, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Well, here it is. One live oak, live edge bowl in the books. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that bark. Oh, my gosh. It's just wonderful. And the grain. It's really quite nice. There's the bottom all finished up. It's a beautiful piece. It's a uh, 
fairly heavy you know as you can see the walls are about three quarters of an inch thick in most places over here uh, quite thin and that's one of the reasons I had to stop but I think it looks great uh, in fact I like it quite a little bit I'd like to thank Mr. Tuffy Marginez for sending this along for all to enjoy if you like this video thumbs up please I'd sure appreciate it if you were to share it I would appreciate that even more if you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.